Hi, my name's Mark and I'm going to give you a brief introduction to how to use Science Scribbler, uh, the new project on Zooniverse. So Science Scribbler is uh, developed by Diamond Light Source and it's a project that's trying to help us um, analyse some of the imaging data that we collect. The data we're going to start at looking at first is cell biology data uh, from the B24 beamline. So potentially very, very interesting, very good research in things like uh, medicines and also understanding of diseases. So when you start Science Scribbler, when you go to your universe, you get to this page and we want to just get started straight away. The first thing you'll get presented with is an image which you then want, we want you to then tell us about. Now this is a great one to start off with because this image is a blank image. So you can see the image presented here. There's very little information in there and there's actually some streaking down the side. Now I know this is a blank image pretty easily. How do you? Well if you check in our field guide there's a section on blank images and it shows you an example of what some of these images look like. So blank images are nice and easy. We literally just say no objects here, check that and then say done. That's really useful for us just because it helps us identify um, uh, frames where there's nothing of interest, uh, which allows us to automatically remove them from things you might want um, uh, researchers to have to look at. On this image, there is one object on here, so we'll um, specify that. So first, you use the object marker and just drop a little spot where that is. Then what we want to do is there are two steps to this process. One of them is identifying the objects, but the other one is giving us a bit of a better idea of what those objects are using the object outliner. Personally, I prefer to zoom in a little bit. So I use the mouse wheel to zoom just so I can see a little bit better what's going on and this movement icon to drag around. I then use the object outliner, click back on the arrow and that lets me draw a little oval. Now these drag handles allow me to change the size of it and I can basically position that over the object that I've found and try and get a pretty good match. Now in this circumstance if I zoom out again or mouse wheel uh, that's pretty much the only object in there. It was almost blank but not quite. I've got one object drawn and one object outlined. I'm good to go on to the next image. Ah, Here's an image with a bit more content in it. So this is more the sort of thing we want to, to look at. And once again, I'm going to use the object marker to start off with, and I'm going to mark some of these objects. So basically, I'm looking for anything that looks like a little blob um, on the image. So I'm going to put a few objects, a few markers down. That's probably enough. Now, it's not critical that you get all of them, but if you can get as many as you can, that's great. Multiple people look at each one of these images for us so hopefully between all of you you'll be able to pick up all of the things that we're interested in. If you want to have a, a look at other things you know about what sort of things you should be picking once again in the field guide there's an object marker that shows you the sorts of items you should be trying to pick out of the different images. Once again the next step is to go to the object outliner and once again I'm gonna scroll in oops, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to start drawing these objects. Now, I generally prefer to draw the object just slightly off where I want to put it and then drag it into place because sometimes if you're trying to position it quite carefully, it can be difficult. I noticed that my marker was off a little bit there so I can just drag it back into position when I'm doing this dropping stage. But it does highlight the fact that if I'm trying to draw at the same place as one of these I can often grab it by accident which makes life a little bit difficult to do. So just use the drag handles, drop it in place, perfect. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, makes life a bit easier. So let's just drop these on and what we're trying to achieve here is basically making sure that we have the same number of object markers as we have outlines. Now one thing I guess it's quite important to say here is that the object marks, the, the, the little crosses, don't actually need to be right in the middle of where the object is. And in fact, in, in a way, it's sometimes better if they're not, uh, because that um, helps us train the algorithms we want to use a little bit more easily. Oops. Oh, yeah, if I draw one in the wrong place, just click the little X to get rid of it. Because I was trying to move around there. Where's the other one? Now, this object, you can see 
with these object outliners, I've just got an oval. Some of the objects that you may see are a bit bigger or a bit strange shape. So just generally try and encompass them with the oval shape. Um, these are things we're going to kind of have to come back to at a later date to, to analyze. But if you give us a rough idea of where they are using this, then that will help us out lots. So, um, oops, so there's, I'm not quite, where are they? Oh, there we go. Here's the other three down here. So let's zoom in again. And then let's put the outline on these objects. So that one's about there. Try and be reasonably close to the object if you can. Uh, or reason to the, reasonably close to the object size. If the drag just starts disappearing, that means that the area you're trying to show is slightly too small. Uh, so if that happens, don't worry about it. You can go and get rid of the, the point that you've dropped on there. Um, so once again, if you click on these, you get the little X, so you can get rid of that. In this case, I'll drop that one back on, go to the object outliner, and put our outline on here. Good. Um, I'm going to zoom right out again at the end, just to make sure I'm happy that I've got all the things. Oh, in fact, uh, that's probably one over there. So. I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna zoom in over here. Yeah, I'll pick that one as well. Now, I'm not a biologist, I'm a physicist and a software developer, so I have no idea of really the biological information that's going on here. But the important the thing that's interesting with this is that all we really need to do is pick these items, and that gives when we do the analysis, that enables the biologists to pick the information that they're interested out. So as long as we highlight anything that looks roughly like we're interested in then we're fine and in fact there's clearly another blob there so this is a nice thing you can just quickly nip back and fix up anything that you want to if you realize you've you've missed a spot which you think oh that might be quite important good so once again we're gonna zoom right out get back to the main picture that looks good and we can say done and then we move on to the next one and this will basically keep on going. You can keep going and you can identify or classify as many as you like or as few as you like. As I say, try to get as many of the things on each frame as you can. If it's really big and funny shapes, just put an overall circle around it. Uh, the field guide gives you some instructions on what you can identify, but also some hints and tips on what you need to outline and how you can outline things. One thing that is worth pointing out, um, there are these kinds of circular structures. Sometimes you'll see them and they're in a regular grid. Those sort of circle structures are part of the, um, the film onto which we grow the cells. Um, they're not actually of interest to us. So if you see this very, very clear, regular pattern of circles, then don't worry about that at all. Just leave those out because they're going to almost certainly contain other things. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you're interested in any more information, then if you go to the talk pages, then there's a whole series of different things. So you can ask us questions specifically. We'll post announcements on here and we're looking to update the content. We've picked one specific thing to start off our project on Zooniverse, but Science Scribbler has got the ability to look at all kinds of different um, science that we do at Diamond. Um, there's also a place for technical support or uh, just adding notes. So if you want to talk about any of the specific things, um, technical support to get us help on how to draw annotations or whatever you want to do with that, or if you're having problems, um, questions for the research team about what the biologists are actually researching or what the other scientists at Diamond are researching um, associated with this, then just ask us there and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. I think that's pretty much everything that I need to talk to you about. Hopefully this brief demo will give you a good idea of how to use Science Scribbler and really do be aware that all of the information, so the information we're collecting here, we're using to train algorithms to be able to use this automatically to segment data and to get the best out of the data that we collect at Diamond um, in the future. So everything you do will be phenomenally useful to us. So thank you again for being uh, interested in the Science Scribbler project and um, good luck with classifying all of the data for us. Thank you.